All right. Okay. Natin. All right, yung nakikita nyo po sa screen is basically the Old Testament historical overview. But that's until Nehemiah and Ezra, okay, nung pag-build ng wall. Pero dito po sa unang part, nakikita nyo dyan, si Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prehistoric flood, flood from Babel, nang ginagdal po nakapasok si Adan and Eve, all right, that is 2000 hanggang 2000 BC. Then, the next was on slavery in Egypt, kung gano'n sila katagal doon, around 400 plus, 400, 400 plus years, 410 years. Okay? Then after that, Exodus and Conquest, nandiyan na po si Mose and si Joshua. Basically, ito, ito po yung sa part na to, nandito po yung pinag-aaralan nating Torah, yung Tetzaweh. Alright? Yung haptara natin is basically, nandito pa po, sa, sa exile in Babylon, 586 BZ. Bakit importante yan? Kahit tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, that was the year na nasira yung temple na pinatayo ni Solomon. And ang nagsasira is ang haring ni Bukad Nasar. Okay? So, from Exodus, napakalayo po. Okay? Dumaan pa sa mga judges, nagkaroon ng, 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 ng iisang kingdom na nagahari si Saul, si David, at si Solomon. Then after that, after Solomon, basically nagkahati-hati na. Okay? Meron ng, nagkaroon na ng Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, ang tinatawag natin Judah. And Israel, all right, the two witnesses or the two olive trees, kung, kung, kung mamarapatin ninyo. Okay, and dito ang pinag-uusapan natin is nandito pa sa part na to. Sa panahon ni Prophet Ezekiel and nandun sila sa captivity in Babylon. All right, now, balikan natin yung mga pinag-aralan natin kanina or yung binasa natin kanina. Let's go Ezekiel chapter 43. Okay. Verse 1, Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looked toward the east. And behold, the glory of Elohim of Yisrael came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Chabar. And I fell upon my face, and the glory of Yahuwah came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east. So the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court and behold the glory of Yahuwah filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house and the man stood by me. And yung verse 7, yan po yung may dumagdudulat tayo. Sabi ng verse 7, And he said unto me, Son of man. Alright, he's talking to Ezekiel. The place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Yisrael forever, and my holy name shall the house of Yisrael no more defile. Remember, nandun sila, nandun sila sa panahon na to sa Babylon. In captivity sila. Nasira na yung temple. And sinasabi ng Panginoon, sinasabi ng truth, Prophet Ezekiel, the place which is my throne, which is the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Yisrael forever, and my holy name, the house of Yisrael, no more defiled. Okay? Kaya nga sinasabi ko po kanina, this is about sa future, sa revelation, sa pagbabalik ng Panginoong Yahushua. Okay? Basically, dinipile ng tao. Sabi dyan, my holy name shall the house of Yisrael no more defiled. Neither they nor their kings by their whoredom nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. Pinulyot ng tao eh. Yung holy temple, pinulyot ng tao. Okay? Dinefile yung pangalan ng Panginoon. And ano ang batas na nasisira sa pagdidefile ng pangalan ng Panginoon? The third commandment. Ano ang sabi sa third commandment sa Exodus chapter 20? Thou shalt not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Okay? Huwag mong gagamitin yung pangalan ng Panginoon sa walang kabuluhan. Sa papanong paraan? Sa pagpapamagitan lang ba ng pagsasalita? No. Sa pamamagitan lang pa ba ng paggamit ng pangalan ng Panginoon? Basta-basta, no. Dapat na ipapakita yun sa buhay natin. Sa mga ginagawa natin. Okay? Sinasabi pa dyan, 
okay, by their hoardup. Remember sa pagdating sa Revelation, merong, merong, makikita nyo rin po ito sa Proverbs, merong whores, merong strange woman, and merong pure. Ito po ang nangyari sa, 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 sa templo ng Panginoon. By their hoardup. Imbis na ang Panginoon ang sinasamba ng tao, ibang Panginoon. Imbis ni si Yahushua ang sinasamba ng tao, ibang Jesus Christ ang sinasamba ng tao. And yan po yung dinidefile natin yung templo ng panahon sa panahon natin ngayon. Okay? Yung covenant na pinag-usapan natin sa panahon, ng, sa panahon ni Moshe is the same covenant na meron tayo ngayon. Sabi ng Panginoon, in the future, ilalagay niya sa mga, ilalagay niya sa mga inward parts natin, ilalagay yan sa puso natin. But for the meantime, from the time na binigay niya yung utos, people break it. I do, I do. Pero, adulterous eh. I do, I do. Yes, sir. Susundin po namin. Pero nag-worship ang tao ng idols. Alright, nakakatuwa nga. Actually, hindi nakakatuwa. <laughs> Nakakalungkot. <laughs> Meron na pong santo ang internet ngayon. <laughs> Kung nakikita niyo yung mga balita, so ang pangalan? St. Carlo, 15 years old, naging santo. Santo ng internet. Napapalakas siguro yung imbis na 5G, nagiging 6G or whatever G there. Grabe po. And yet people, sinasamba, niluluhuran, pinupunas-punasan, binibendisyonan, dinadamitan, ay grabe ang tao, di ba? My people are destroyed because lack of knowledge. Hindi kasi nagbabasa ang tao. Hindi nag-aaral ang tao. Grabe. Dinipile natin ang pangalan ng Panginoon. How many years that we pollute this tabernacle? How many years ng buhay natin? Kaya nga ito yung sinasabi, sinasabi ko po kanina, the purpose of this is to put us to shame. Maalala natin how many years na pinulyot natin yung tabernacle ng Panginoon. Wala tayong pinagkaiba kay Antiochus na nag-alay ng, nag-alay ng, mga, ng mga baboy, ng mga abominable items, abominable food, offerings sa tabernacle ng Panginoon. Same tayo. Tayo yun eh. Alright. Sabi ng Panginoon, you offer yourself that is your living sacrifice. It should be spot, na, na, no spot. It should be unblemished. Pero anong ginawa natin sa tabernacle natin? Pinulyot natin ang kung ano-ano. Alright? Kaya no wonder, pag, I think na, al, alam natin ito, pagdating sa Romans chapter 1, anong ginawa ng Panginoon? I give up. Not because he want to give up the people, but that's the purpose of cause and effect principles ng Panginoon. Pag meron kang ginawa, ito ang, ito ang mangyayari. Nang dahil sa kalokohan ng tao, nang dahil sa katigasan ng ulo ng tao, nang dahil sa, ang tao ayaw, mag, ayaw magbasa, ayaw mag-aral, ayaw makinig. Mas gusto pang sundin yung, yung, yung tao din mismo kaysa sa salita ng Panginoon. God gave them up. Bakit maraming nagkakasakit? Alright. One of the cause nung, nung, nung mortality ng COVID is not definite. It's is, is not just COVID. Karamihan po nung, nung dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng mortality or may namamatay na tao dahil sa COVID is dahil sa complication. Not the virus itself. Dahil sa complication. Bakit? Pagpasok ng virus, ang dami ng, ang dami ng sirang parts sa loob ng katawan. Eh. Katamaan yung kidney, katamaan yung atay. Katamaan yung kung ano-anong body parts dyan. Why? Pinoyso ng tao. Eh. Pinoyso ng tao. Katamaan yung lungs. Bakit? Instead na prayer ng Panginoon, yung nasa loob ng katawan natin, nasa loob ng sistema natin, yung prayer natin, which is the sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Imbis na ganung usok yung ibigay natin sa Panginoon, ibang usok yung nilagay ng tao eh. Boro, Hope, Champion. Hanggang kailan tayo matututo? Hanggang kailan tayo makikinig-kinig lang tapos pasok dito, labas dito? 
Ayun yung manual ng buhay o sa harap natin. You need to make sure that this tabernacle is holy. Hindi atin to eh. Yung totoong tayo nandyan sa loob pero yung it's just a vessel. It's just a vessel mga kapatid. It should be offered unblemished, unspotted in front of Yahuwah. Alright, I'll continue. Verse 8. In their setting of their threshold by my by my thresholds and their posts by my posts and the wall between me and them, they have eaten and defiled my holy name by their abomination that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in my anger. Parehas lang po ito sa Romans chapter 1. After showing them who is Yahuwah, ito po nakakatakot para sa atin. After, after the raw wakakudis na ipakita sa atin yung katotohanan, kapag bumalik ka sa dati mong nature, totoo talaga yung Proverbs. Tapos mong isuka, kakainin mo ulit. Wala kang pinagkaiba sa asa. And in the Revelation, those dogs are outside, sa labas. Okay? Do not defile the holy name by defiling this tabernacle. Verse 9, Now let them put away their whoredom, okay? And the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. What's the purpose? Ano, ano lagi ang desire ng Panginoong Yahuwah? Ano lagi ang gusto niya para sa atin? Makasama niya tayo. Sa umpisa pa lang yun, pinakita na po sa atin. I want to dwell with you. And right now, He is dwelling with us by the Ruach HaKodes inside this tabernacle. Don't pollute it. Huwag natin ipulit yan. Sabi niya, now let them put away their hordam. Yung mga pananam, kung may mga rosaryo pa tayo dyan, kung may mga, kung may mga ano-ano pang mga agima tayo dyan, may mga anting-anting pa tayo dyan, alisin po natin. Anggalin natin. Put away their hordam. Verse 10, Thou son of man, Shew the house to the house of Yisrael that they may be ashamed of their Torahlessness. Remember, iniquity is equivalent to Torahlessness. Sabi ng scriptures, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. Naway sa mga napag-aralan natin from the previous month, sa mga nakalipas na buwan ng mga pag-aaral natin, ang pagpinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon, Nahihiya tayo ngayon sa harapan niya. At kung nahihiya ka sa harapan niya, hindi mo na gagawin yung mga bagay na nakakahiya. Shame on us. Sabi niya, that they may be ashamed of their Torahlessness. Na mahiya naman tayo sa kawala natin ng batas dati. Na akala natin, okay na ang lahat, na ipako na sa cross yung batas, tapos na lahat, ginawa niya na, wala na akong gagawin. Nakakahiya. Nakakahiya. Okay? Verse 11. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, sabi niya rito, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the goings in thereof, yung pagpasok sa loob, yung pagpasok sa labas, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and what? and all the Torah thereof, and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the order and ordinances thereof and do them. Important yan. Okay? We can show you all the parallels. Okay? Maipakita sa atin ng Panginoon yung lahat ng parallel ng mga pinag-aaralan natin from Revelation to Genesis. Pero pag hindi natin ginagawa, sayang. Sayang. Okay? So we are talking in the Messianic temple in here and ang sabi ng scriptures, merong batas. Nandun yung Torah. Nandun yung Torah. Sa simula pa lang nandun yung Torah. Sa panahon natin nandyan yung Torah. In the future, nandyan ang Torah. Hindi natin pwedeng tanggalin ang Torah. Okay? It will be written in our hearts. In our flesh. In the inward parts. Nandyan ang Torah. 
Okay? Kaya hindi nakakatakot ang Torah, mga kapatid. Yung mga tao magtuturo, wala ng Torah, hindi na natin dapat sundin yan. Okay? Meron kasi minsan tayong mindset na pag sinabing Torah, it's more on offering, offering lang. No? Ah, yung mga pagkakatay-katay, yan yung Torah. Eh. No, no. Napakarami po nito. Hindi lang yung mga ganong bagay ang pagdating pag, pag ang pinag-uusapan pagdating sa Torah. Okay? All right. Ano sabi ni Apostle Jeremiah ni, ni Prophet Jeremiah? Pinag-aralan natin ito. This is was the last verse na binigay ko po sa inyo nung nakaraan. Kung nahihiya tayo kasi ang purpose nito is para para mahiya tayo sa mga pinagagawa natin. Kung nahihiya tayo, anong dapat natin ginagawa? Ang sabi sa Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 that say Yahweh is standing in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Let's go back sa old paths. Go back sa old path. Where is the good way and walk therein? We will we will walk where? In the old paths. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Pero ang sabi ng tao, na na na. Hindi namin kailangan yung batas. Manampalataya lang, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that the Lord Jesus, okay na kami. Ligtas na kami. No, no, no. Hindi namin kailangan ng batas. Tinapos na lahat yan. Mga kapatid, away. Buksan ang isipan natin ng Panginoon. Okay? If you want to be an overcomer, overcomer of what? Overcomer of sin. Kasi sila po yung nandun sa revelation. Those overcomer. Those overcomer, those witnesses, yung stray lights, makakabilang ka doon, kasama mo ang mga stray lights. And they are following the Torah. They are obeying the Torah. Alright, I'll continue. Verse 12, This is the law, this is the Torah of the house upon the top of the mountain. The whole limit thereof, run about, shall be most holy. Behold, this is the Torah of the house. Sir, may dadagdag ka ba? All right. I think ipapakita ko po yung next slide. That is the uh, kung pinag-aaralan natin yung tabernacle na pinagawa kay Moshe, this is the pag pinagsama-sama niyo yung mga sukat, yung mga design na mababasa natin dito from verse 12 hanggang 27. Ito po yung layout plan niya. And dito po yung altar. All right. Ito yung east gate. And dito yung northern gate, yung, yung southern gate, and nandito sa likod yung western gate. So pagpasok natin dito is andito sa labas yung altar. Alright? So basically, sa messianic temple, messianic kingdom, meron pa rin pong tabernacle. Meron pa rin tabernacle. And ito po yung, ito po yung pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. Okay? Verse 12, verse 13, And these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. The cubit is the cubit and hundred. Even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth and a cubit, and the border thereof, by the edge thereof, run about shall be a span, and this shall be the higher place of the altar. So ano ang focus nito? Yung, ito po, yung altar na to. And ipapakita ko po sa susunod na slide. Yan po yung itsura ng susunod na altar sa Messianic Kingdom, Messianic Temple. Okay? So ito yung side view niya, and ito yung aerial shot niya. So yung mga sukat, yan po yung mga nasa gilid dyan, yung cubit, yung two cubits, yung four cubits, yung, mga su yung susunod na level is yung settle, tsaka yung altar heart is four cubits yung, yung, yung pass. Alright? Yung, yung stairs na to, yung steps na yan is nakaharap po yan dito sa east side. Yung pagpasok, na, pagpasok from the east gate, pagpasok dito, is nakaharap yan dito. Alright? So yan yung itsura ng ating Messianic Temple. Alright. I'll read verse 14. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle shall be two cubits. Okay. Ito na yung lower settle na pinag-usapan dito sa verse 14. And the breadth and one cubit, and from the lesser settle even to the greater settle, shall be four cubits and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be 12 cubits long 
12 broad, is square in the four squares thereof, and the settle shall be 14 cubits long and 14 broad in the four squares thereof, and the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about, and his stairs shall look toward the east. Ito yung sinasabi ko po kanina. Ayong hagdanan is nakatapat sa east gate ng temple. Okay? And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, These are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon. So basically, yung pinag-aaralan po natin sa panahon ni Moshe sa, sa, sa Shemot chapter 30, Shemot chapter 29, gagawin pa rin po natin ito in the future. Kasi ang pinag-usapan natin dito is millennial altar. Gagawin pa rin po yung ganitong pag, pag, pagko-consecrate, pagsasanctify, and alam, alam niyo po yun, if you are familiar with Hanukkah, yung dedication ng temple, okay, ibang study po ito, ay, uh, madaanan po natin in the future, but that was the time na i-dedicate yung temple na to. Okay? It happens in December sa calendar natin. All right. Verse 18, And he said unto me, Son of man, that saith Yahuwah Elohim, these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it, to offer burnt offerings thereon, and to sprinkle blood thereon, and thou shalt give to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me, to minister unto me, saith Adonai Yahuwah, a young bullock for sin offering. So parehas na parehas lang po. Okay, parehas na parehas lang. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns of it and on the four corners of the settle and upon the border and about, thus, thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And on the second day thou shalt offer a kill of the goats without blemish for a sin offering and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock. When thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock. So, tuloy tuloy yung offering. Okay? Thou, thou, thou shalt, when thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before Yahuwah and the priest shall cast salt upon them. And they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah. Verse 25. Seven days shalt thou prepare Every day a goat for sin offering, they shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days shall they, pur shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. All right? Go to Exodus para mas makita natin ito. Kung ano yung ginagawa, pinag-aaralan natin. Balikan lang natin yung pinag-aaralan natin sa Shemot chapter 29. Kasi parehas na parehas po yung sinasabi nila rito ni Prophet Ezekiel. Shemot 29 Verse 37. Ang sabi po dito sa Ezekiel, Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it and they shall consecrate themselves. Okay? Verse 37 ng Shemot 29. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever toucheth the altar shall be holy. So it's the same principles. Makita nyo ha? Sa Messianic Kingdom pa mangyayari ito. Pero the same principles, the same practice ang ginagawa. Seven days, isasanctify nila yung mga sarili nila. They need, they need to make sure that they are holy. Okay? Hindi basta-basta. Verse 27, And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day, ladies and gentlemen, we are entering the Millennial Kingdom. Upon the eighth day, and forever, and so forward, The priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, say it, Adonai Yahuwah. Napakaganda po. Napakaganda. Pero huwag natin makalimutan ano ang pinapagawa sa atin. Mahiya tayo sa inequities natin, sa Torahlessness natin, sa pag-defile natin. Pinakita sa atin ngayon yung Messianic Temple para ipaalala sa atin, bakit nasira yung una, ikalawa na templo ng Panginoon? Why? It's because of the Torahlessness. It's because dahil sa katigasan ng ulo ng tao. Alright? May isishare po ako sa inyo. Kasi ito yung minana natin sa panahon natin ngayon. Sir, may dadagdag ka pa? 
All right. Ito yung minana natin sa panahon natin ngayon. If you read the, the, the yung, yung yung mga yung mga sulat ng propeta sa panahon ng judges, sa panahon ng kings, ang nangyayari, yung mga tao tumitigas ang ulo. Inutos na ganito, hindi ginagawa yung ganito. So basically, ganun paulit-ulit lang. All right. Pero dito po sa 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 Maccabees, it's different story. Ang makikita po ninyo kung gaano pinaglaban ng mga tao ang pagsunod sa batas. Okay? Gaano pinaglaban ng mga tao yung papano maging holy sa harapan ng Panginoon. Kasi ang lagi nating nababasa ah, ang Israel, ang tigas ng ulo, sinabi ng Panginoon na huwag sumamba sa mga Diyos-Diyosan, sumasamba pa rin. Sinabi ng Panginoon na mag-offer sa, sa templo, nag-offer doon sa kung saan-saan, dinidefile yung templo ng Panginoon. Okay? Yan ang mga mababasa natin dito. At pagdating sa, sa Maccabees, it's def, different story mga kapatid. Okay? That was the time na pinaglalaban ng tao ang pagsunod sa Panginoon. Napakasarap po matutunan nito. Napakasarap makita kung ano ang ginagawa, ginawa ng mga taong ito para maipaglaban yung utos ng Panginoon. Alright? So, ikokonek ko lang ito dito sa pinag-aaralan natin kasi gusto ko pong makita natin kung gaano ka-importante yung utos ng Panginoon at ano ang ginawa ng mga taong ito para lang ma-preserve yung salita ng Panginoon. Si share ko po yung Maccabees 1. We will read just chapter 1. Malaki na yun. Doon, kailangan ko pagbubang lakihan. Nababasa niyo po? Okay naman? All right. Yung Maccabees po, meron yan Maccabees 1, Maccabees 2, Maccabees 3, Maccabees 4. I would encourage yung mga kapatid na basahin po ito. Kasi nap na napakaganda po. Napakagandang maintindihan. Napakagandang matutunan. Alright. Verse 1. Maccabees 1, chapter 1, verse 1. After Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came from the land of Kitem, had defeated Darius, king of Persians, and the Medes, he succeeded, succeeded him as a king. He had previously become king of Greece. So sinong Alexander sa mga pinag-aaralan po natin ito sa ng high school? Si Alexander the Great, siya po ito. Kaya pinag-uusapan dito. Okay, isang Macedonian. He fought many battles, conquered strongholds, and put to death the kings of the earth. He advanced to the ends of the earth and plundered many nations. When the earth became quiet before him, he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. Ganon po ko siya kagaling na, na, na conqueror, si Alexander the Great. Okay. He gathered a very strong army and ruled over countries, nations, and princes, and they became tributary to him. Napakaraming movie ang makikita niyo tapatong kol kay Alexander the Great. Okay, after the after this, he fell sick and perceived that he was dying. So he summoned his most honored officers who had been brought up with him from youth and divided his kingdom among them while he was still alive. And after Alexander had reigned twelve years, he died. So basically, namatay si Alexander. Moving forward. Then his officers began to rule is in his own place. They all put on crowns after his death and so did their sons after them for many years and they caused many evils in the earth. So nang after mamatay si Alexander, yung mga generals niya, nagkanya-kanya na. Akin yung lugar na to, akin yung lugar na to, akin yung lugar na ganyan. Okay? Importante matutunan yung history mga kapatid para maunawaan natin kung nasaan tayo ngayon. Right? From them came forth a sinful root, Antiochus Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king. Ito po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, wala tayong pinagkaiba dito. Okay? Ito nag-offer, Antiochus offered pigs, baboy, sa templo ng Panginoon. Tayo, nilagyan natin ng baboy yung templo ng Panginoon. Nakakahiya tayo. Okay? Alright, he had been a hostage in Rome. He began to reign in the 137th year of the kingdom of Greeks. In those days, lawless men came forth from Yisrael and misled many saying, let us go and make a covenant with the Gentiles run about us, for since we separated from them, many evils have come upon us. This proposal please them. So makiparty-party na tayo sa mga Gentiles. Dito kala Antiochus, makisali na tayo sa kanila. And some of the people eagerly went to the king. He authorized them to observe the ordinances of the Gentiles. So they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem according to the Gentile custom. 
and remove the marks of circumcision and abandon the holy covenant. They joined with the, with the Gentiles and sold themselves to do evil. When Antiochus saw that his kingdom was established, he determined to become king of the land of Egypt that he might reign over both kingdoms. So even sa Egypt, gusto niya rin pong maghari. So he invaded Egypt with a strong force with chariots and elephants and cavalry and with a large fleet. He engaged Ptolemy, king of Egypt in battle, and Ptolemy turned and fled before him, and many were wounded and fell. Okay, so balikan natin yung mga pinag-aralan natin sa sibika at kultura, or si history. Makikita nyo po itong mga pangalan na ito, si Ptolemy, si Alexander the Great. Okay? And they captured the fortified cities in the land of Egypt, and he plundered the land of Egypt. After subduing Egypt, Antiochus returned in the 143rd year, he went up against Yisrael and came to Jerusalem with the strong force. After Egypt, balik ito si Antiochus sa Israel. He arrogantly entered the sanctuary and took the golden altar, the lampstand for the light, and all its utensils. He took also the table for the bread of presence, the cups for the offerings, the bowls, the golden censers, the curtain, the crowns, and the golden decoration on the front of the temple. He stripped it all off. Alright? But take note, hindi po nasira ang temple. Nasira ang temple sa panahon ng Babylonian. Ito po is after na ng Babylonian. Okay? So anong ginawa niya? Yung mga, yung mga golden censers, yung mga, mga items doon sa loob ng temple, pinag-aalis nila. He took the silver and the gold and the costly vessels. He took also the hidden treasures which we found. Taking them all, he departed to his own land. He committed deeds of murder and spoke with great arrogance. Kailan nasira yung templo niyo na pinatayo ni Solomon? During the 586 AD sa panahon ni Nebuchadnezzar. Then after that, yung pangalawa is on 70, uh, 586 BC, I mean, sa panahon ni Nebuchadnezzar. Then after that, on 70 AD sa panahon ng mga Romano. Okay, diyan po totally na-distract, nasira yung templo. Okay, verse 25. Israel mourned deeply in every community. Rulers and elders growing. Maidens and young men become faint. The beauty of woman faded. Every bridegroom took up the lament. She who sat in the bridal chamber was mourning. Imbis na masaya yung kasalan, pero nagluluksa sila. Even the land shook for, it, for its inhabitants, and all the house of Yaakov was clothed with shame. Two years later, the king sent to the cities of Yehuda a chief collector of tribute, and he came to Jerusalem with a large force. Deceitfully, he spoke peaceable words to them, and they believed him. Para ngayon lang. Para ngayon lang, di ba? Kasundo-kasunduan tayo. But he suddenly fell upon the city, dealt it a severe blow, and destroyed many people of Yisrael. He plundered the city, burned it with fire, and tore down its houses and its surrounding walls. Imagine kung nandyan ka sa panahon na yan. Isa ka sa mga Israelites sa panahon na yan. And they took captive the women and children and seized the cattle. Then they fortified the city of David with this great strong wall and strong towers and it became their citadel. And they stationed there a simple people, lawless men. This strengthened their position. They stored up arms and food and collecting the spoils of Jerusalem. They stored them there and became a great snare. It became an ambush against the sanctuary and evil adversary of Yisrael continually. Ito po ang nangyari sa panahon ni Antiochus. Sa panahon ng mga Griego. Alright? On every side of the sanctuary, they shed innocent blood. They even defiled the temple, the sanctuary. Because of them, the, res the resident of Jerusalem fled. She became a dwelling of strangers. She became strained to her offsprings, and her children forsook her. Her sanctuary became desolate as a desert. Her feasts were turned into mourning. Her Sabbath into a reproach. Her honor into contempt. Can you imagine kung nandyan ka sa panahon na yan? Kaya nga sinasabi ko po sa inyo, dito sa, mga, sa, sa panahon ng mga judges, sa panahon ng mga kings, ang problema ang titigas ng ulo. Pero dito sa Maccabees, makikita natin ano ang nangyari. Merong mga tao na matitigas ang ulo, pero merong mga tao na ipinaglaban ang pagpapatuloy sa salita ng Panginoon. Verse 40, Her dishonor now grew as great as her glory. Her exaltation was turned into mourning. Then the king wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Here's the decree of King Antiochus. And that each should give up his custom. Kalimutan ang batas. Kalimutan ang Torah. 
All the Gentiles accepted the command of the king. Many even from Israel gladly adopted his religion. Hanggang sa umabot sa panahon natin. Okay? Hanggang sa umabot sa panahon natin. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. Wala nang rumerespeto sa Sabbath. Biyernes, Sabado na. And the king sent letters by messenger to Jerusalem and the cities of Yehuda. He directed them to follow custom is strange to the land, to forbid, to forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the sanctuary to profane Sabbath and feast. Anong nangyari? Instead na celebrate yung feast of tabernacles, ano ang sinaselebrate? Nagpasko na tayo. Instead na celebrate yung Passover, ano ang nangyayari? Magpapako na tayo sa Panginoon katulad ng ginawa niya. Mag-Holy Week na tayo. To defile the sanctuary and the priest, to build altars and sacred presents and shrines for idols, to sacrifice swine and unclean animals. Ang pagsasakripisyo po ng baboy, ginagawa po yan para kay Zeus, the God of the Greeks. Hindi po yan para sa Panginoong Yahweh. They sacrifice. Imagine nyo, holy temple. Imagine nyo, holy temple ito ngayon. Nakakahiya tayo. Nakakahiya. And to leave their sons uncircumcised, They were to make themselves abominable by everything unclean and profane so that they should forget the Torah and change all doctrines and change all ordinances. Yan po ang minana natin. Yan ang minana sa panahon natin. And whoever does not obey the command of the king, isa lang, namamatay. Imagine ninyo ang sarili nyo na nandan sa panahon na yan. What will you do? Will you obey Yahua, o susunod ka sa king na yan. In such words, he wrote this whole kingdom and he appointed inspector over all the people and commanded the cities of Yehuda to offer sacrifice city by city. Ano ang i-offer? Baboy. Many of the people, everyone who forsook the Torah, joined them and they did evil in the land. Marami rin po ang sumama. They drove Yisrael into hiding in every place of refuge they hide. Now in the 15th day of Kislev, in the 145th year, they erected a desolating sacrilege upon the altar of burnt offering. They also built altars in the surrounding cities of Yehuda. Sino ang nilagay? Jesus. The God of the Greeks. Banggitin nyo lang yung pangalan. Sa salitang Griego. Sa salitang Greeks, yung pangalang Zeus. It's Isus. Bilisan nyo pa. Isus. Sino ang sinasamba pa ng tao ngayon? Isus. Galing po yan dito sa mga Griego, mga kapatid. That was the time na pin, pinupulyot nila yung templo ng Panginoon. Verse 55, and burn incense. Tataposin ko po. And burn incense of the doors of the houses and the streets, the books, the books of the Torah, yung libro ng batas ng Panginoon, which they found, the to- they tore to pieces and burned with fire. Grabe, di ba? Tayo, ito na. Oh. Sila, pinaglalaban nila yan. Nakabasa sila ng batas ng Panginoon, ng utos ng Panginoon. Tayo, ito na. Ini-interpret pa natin ng mali-mali. Nakakalungkot yun, hindi pa natin binabasa. Tapos sasabihin natin, kristyano naman kami, pupunta kami sa langit. Pero hindi natin binabasa. 57. Where the book of the covenant was found in the possession of anyone or, or, or if anyone had heard to the Torah, kung sino man ang sumunod sa Torah, sa batas, the decree of the king condemned him to death. Ngayon, libre lang eh. Dami nga sa eklesya natin dyan sa UAE. Kahit tag-ilan, pwede, kayong, pwede tayong maka-avail, pwede tayong makahingi. Ngayon, libre lang. There was a time in their, in, sa panahon nila mga kapatid, na kulti mo meron ka nito, mamamatay ka. Pag meron ka nito, mamamatay ka. 
They kept using violence against Yisrael, against those found month after month in the cities. And on the 25th day of the month, they offered sacrifice on the altar, which was upon the altar of birth offering. According to the decree, they put to death the woman who had their children circumcised. Sa panahon na yan, pag circumcised ka mga kapatid, you will be put to death. Grabe, di ba? Tayo, binabasta-basta lang natin. And their families and those who circumcised them, and they hung the infants from their mother's necks. Can you imagine that? May bata. Tatali sa lig ng nanay, tapos doon mamamat. Yan ang pinagdaanan ng mga kapatid nating mga Israelites. Just to preserve the Torah. Just to preserve this book. Tapos ngayon, inihiwalay na natin yung Old Testament sa Old Testament. Focus lang tayo dito sa Old sa New Testament. Shame. Shame. 62. But many in Israel stood firm and were resolved in their hearts not to eat unclean food. They chose to die or rather to be defiled by food ra rather than to be defiled by food or to profane the holy covenant and namatay sila. But they chose to die to preserve the Torah. Sa Maccabees chapter 2, makita nyo po dyan yung mga pinag-usapan natin. Ito si Matatias, yung tatay nila, mayroon siyang limang anak. Ang pangalan is John, Mark Gadi, kung ikaw ito, Mark Angelo Gadi, baka tatay nyo po ito, si John Gadi, surname Gadi. Okay. Si Simon called Tassi, si Judas, siya po yung pinakakilala, si Judas Macabeos, na tinawag naman ni Macabeos, and si Elisar called Abaran, and Jonathan called Apus. Sila po yung mga pinuno during that time that preserved the Torah. Pero there was a time in their life, mga kapatid, meron kang libro, mamamatay ka. Circumcise ka, mamamatay ka. Hindi ka susunod, mag, lumabag ka sa utos ng hari, magsabat ka, mamamatay ka. Panahon natin, mga kapatid, libreng-libre na. Available anytime. And yet, binabaliwala lang natin. We continue defiling and putting abomination in this tabernacle. Mahiya tayo, mga kapatid. Yan po ang pinasabi sa atin na Ezekiel chapter 43. It is for us to be shamed kung ano yung ginawa natin na na-defile natin ang tabernacle ng Panginoon. Because there was a time mga tao na mamatay to preserve this Torah. Sir? Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Gary. And uh, napaganda po niya Maccabees 1 to understand and I believe this was hidden from us for ako sabihin ko for 39 years it was hidden. Alam ko, may, actually alam ko yung Maccabees na yun. Niloloko-loko ko nga yan dati na Makabebe kasi sa Tagalog Makabebe yan. Pero we really didn't take interest in it, in reading it until now when our creator gave us the opportunity Bigyan niya tayo ng opportunity na maliwanagan sa katotohanan. And eventually, kung titignan nyo nga po, maybe we're not dying for doing the Sabbath. We're not dying for eating unclean food. Pero the persecution of people today, especially when it comes kung galing po kayo sa Christianity, kung galing tayo sa Christianity, and we get out of Christianity, they will persecute us. They will tell bakit kayo sa Sabbath kasi that's done away already by Yahushua, by Jesus Christ. And uh, sabi nila, nalinis na lahat ng pagkain. And these epistles of Paul are greatly misunderstood sa mga sinabi niya. And hindi naman ito po talaga yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul sa kanyang epistles. Now, if you turn your scriptures to Matthew chapter 7, just give me a few minutes, I want to show to you. Alam ko bago sa atin yung Maccabees. And I encourage you, read the scriptures, uh, the 66 books. And when you read the book of Maccabees, it will not... Hindi, hindi nga po ito sisira sa pananampalatay niyo. Actually, it will strengthen your faith. Uh, medyo malalim ang English na ginamit dyan kasi King, lalo na kung King James ang ginagamit niyo. But uh, just bear with it and truly understand. Makikita niyo kung kano uh, ang persecution sa mga uh, Israelites when they try when they did their best to follow the law. Uh, Maccabees chapter uh, 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees, ayan, maganda rin yan. Yung 3 Maccabees is talking about yung pinapapatay sila 
when you read when you read gymnations uh, ilagay niyo sa isip niyo yung Colosseum yan po yung mga gymnasium na pinatayo nila na kung saan pinapakain sa tigre yung mga tao and sa Maccabees 3 third Maccabees nandun po yung unang pinapakain sa Leon yung mga tao may tiger din may tiger din yung picture may tiger eh <laughs> Yung sa 3rd Maccabees ay pinapaapakan sila sa mga elepante. Okay? Yun yung sa 3rd Maccabees. And then sa 4th Maccabees, that is an explanation of Maccabees chapter, uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and chapter 7. Uh, talking about yung uh, dapat yung reasoning natin when it comes to the word of Yahuwah is above the, our passions. Okay? So... Go to Matthew chapter 7 and I'll end with this. Unless meron pa po kayong idadagdag. And uh, this is very good because you can see here, Yahusha, sabi po niya dito in verse uh, 12. I'll start in verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. So remember, kung, pag, kung babalikan yung pinag-aral natin about Mishpatim, about... Uh, uh, the commandments, it's all about loving your neighbor. And sabi niya dyan, do you even to them for this is the Torah and the prophets. Ito yung tinuturo ng Torah. Yung mahalin natin ang kapwa natin. Now, verse 13, very famous verse, enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Alright? So it's Yahusha himself quoting this. But I want to show you scripture which will not be found in your King James. Pero I've shared a couple of uh, a couple of verses from here before. Let me just close this. It's two Esdras. Alright? Two Esdras. And uh, I'll relate this because we've been talking about precious stones. Pero uh, let me just go back sa sinabi ng Panginoong Yahusha because this is actually an expounded version ng sinabi ng Panginoong Yahusha about the gates, about the entrances. And remember, these are actually doors. So let me just read here. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the nights afore. And he said unto me, Up, Esdras, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. Now, Esdras, as you have seen in Brother Gary's illustration kanina, sila yung nandun sa second uh, rebuilding of the temple. Alright? Sila yung bago mag pero after, uh, actually during the time of Ezekiel, I think, or after in Ezekiel. So, he's a high priest. He was also a prophet. And this uh, two Esdras, or otherwise called four Esdras, is very prophetic. Okay? Actually, when you study about uh, end times, maganda pong basahin tong librong to. This is same as Ezra. The book of Ezra, uh, naging Esdras po kasi naging Greek na din. Alright? And I said, speak on my Elohim. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance was narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. So sabi niya, dadaan to ka dapat para makapunta ka dun sa malawak, dadaan ka sa makipot. There is also another thing. A city is built in and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left of deep water. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water so small that there could be one man go there at once. So makipid po talaga yung daan. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So basically, kung titignan nyo, yung sinabi ng Panginoong Yahusha, makipid ang daan papunta doon. Sa maraming magsasabi, kalangitan. Alright? But we're talking about what the inheritance and what was promised to Israel. In verse 10, and I said, it is so. 
Adonai. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. And we've been studying that the promises are given to Yasharel, all right, or otherwise Israel. Verse 11, because for their sakes, I made the world. Now, this is very, um, it will add to knowledge. Kasi, nung pinag- nagsimula tayo ng Torah, it has given us understanding that the chosen people are the Israelites. All right? No question. They are the bride. We read that in Revelation in our past studies. So, sabi dyan in verse 11, because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid upon for them. Brethren, makitid, laid up for them. Makitid po ang daan. Verse 15, Now therefore, why disquietest thou thyself, seeing thou art but a corruptible man, and why art thou moved, whereas thou art but mortal? Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come rather than that which is present? Then answered I and said, O Yahuwah that bearest rule, thou hast ordained in thy Torah that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for wide. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wide. Mas mainam na na dumaan tayo ngayon sa makitid na daan to the old paths rather than treading the majority, yung paramihan, yung uh, kung saan umaagos ang Christianity today telling us that everything has been done away with. Uh, let me just continue. And he said unto me, There is no judge above Elohim and none that hath understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the Torah of Elohim that is set before them. For Elohim hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. At yan po yung inuto sa Israel. Pinag-aaralan natin yan ngayon. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. Romans chapter 1. Tama? Uh, became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Therefore, Elohim, Yahuwah, gave them up, all right, to a reprobate mind. Verse 23, and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. But his Torah have they despised. Brethren, let me ask us this question today. Pag pinag-aaralan natin yung Torah, anong pumapasok sa isip natin? Si Jesus Christ na nagburan niyan? O si Yahusha? na dinala ang Torah at ginawa niya sa buhay niya. Two question, uh, two two types of of Messiah. The Jesus Christ that was taught to us before, which is a false Jesus, or Yahusha who is giving us salvation and bring us bring us back to the Torah of Yahuwah. Let me just continue verse 24 and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not perform his works. Now, let me jump to verse uh, 46 just to save time. But I encourage you to read this. 2 Esdras chapter 7. All right. 46. Sabi niya, I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying, that he not, it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam or else when it was given him to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit it Prophet, is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment? O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. 
Romans chapter 5. Yeah? You can see this are actually direct quotes from the, the, the writings of Apostle Paul. And uh, it's very evident that uh, for me, I, I strongly believe this is scripture. Verse 49, for what, profit, uh, let, uh, for what profit is it unto us if there be promised as an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahuwah is eternal life. Verse 50, and that there is promised us an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves, being most wicked, are made vain. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety, whereas we have lived wickedly. Sabi ni Moshe, choose life. Choose the Torah. Verse 52, and that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life, whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all. And that there should be shewed a paradise whose fruit endureth forever. And this was written in Revelation, the tree of life is going to be restored, okay? Wherein is security and medicine since we shall not uh, enter into it. Wait lang. This is still Esdras uh, 2.7. Uh, let me just jump. Bakit iba tong Wait lang, parang kulang yung... Verse 49. And should go back to the. All right. Verse 62. Habi niya, I answered then. Uh, let me just continue what we were reading. Uh, verse 54. For we have walked in unpleasant places. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said, but if he get the victory, he shall receive the things that I say. For this is the life whereof Moshe spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose the life that thou mayest live. Ito, pareho kami nang nasa isip. <laughs> Pero yan yung sinabi ni Moshe. Choose life. Verse 60. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which have spoken unto them, that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. I answered then and said, I know, Yahuwah, that the Most High is called merciful in that he hath mercy upon them which are not yet come into the world and upon those also that turn to his Torah. And that he is patient, long suffereth those that have sinned as his creatures and that he is bountiful for he is ready to give where it needeth and that he is of great mercy for he multiplieth more and more mercies to them that are present and that are past and also to them which are to come for if he shall not multiply his mercies the world would not continue with them that inherit therein so makikita niyo po dito sa sinasabi ni Esdras na malapad yung daan, going to destruction. And a lot of us have been treading that path. A lot of us have been falling into that path. But as Yahushua said, and I believe he was also, since he was the one giving instructions to Esdras, I, I believe they had the same thought, saying, narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And there's very few that find it. So brethren, I encourage you. I encourage each and every one of us to stay faithful and learn the ways of Yahuwah. Kasi yan po talaga yung tinuro ng Panginoong Yahusha. Alright? There's uh, another verse. I don't know why it's not here, but let me just... Ano, ano yung uh, website na ginagamit natin, Brother Gary? Nandun sa isang computer ko eh.
Do you uh, yung may apocryphal books? I I want to end with this because it's talking about precious stones. Hello. Hindi kita naririnig, bro. Mute. Huh? Should it be Gripa? Ah, pseudo. Thank you, thank you. Pseudo Grapia. Big Grapa. All right, thanks. Uh, just want to finish with this. Uh, Alam ba't wala? Kasi yung sa Sefer, ito din yung wala eh. Uh, let's just... Uh, Ezra... Dot 7. Wala. Wala. For Ezra... Give me just uh... here. All right, I found it. Sabi dito, and he answered me and said, "Listen to me, Ezra, and I will instruct you and I will admonish you yet again." For this reason, the Most High has made not one world, but two. For whereas you have said that the righteous are not many, but few, while the ungodly abound, hear the explanation for this. If you have just a few precious stones, will you add to them lead and clay? Alimbawa, meron ka pong jewelry box. Lalagyan mo ba yun ng buhangin? Lalagyan mo ba yun ng lupa? Tsaka ng mga tanso, lalagyan mo ba yun ng uh, ano yung takip ng bote ng coke? Tansan? Hindi. Yeah. I said, Yahuwah, how could that be? And he said to me, not only that, but ask the earth and she will tell you, defer to her and she will declare it to you. Say to her, you produce gold and silver and brass and also iron and lead and clay. So ang mundo po nagpo-produce ng gold, ng silver, ng brass, pero mahirap hanapin yun. But the iron, the lead, and the clay, you can actually see it in everyday life. Verse 56, But silver is more abundant than gold, and brass than silver, and iron than brass, and lead than iron, and clay than lead. Judge, therefore, which things are precious and desirable, those that are abundant or those that are rare. Alin ang mas gusto nyo? Ginto o tansan? Verse 58, I said, O sovereign Yahuwah, what is plentiful is of less worth, for what is more rare is more precious. He answered me and said, Weigh within yourself what you have thought. For he who has what is hard to get rejoices more than he who has who has what is plentiful. So also will be the judgment which I have promised. For I will rejoice over the few who shall be saved. Because it is they who have made my glory to prevail now and through them my name has now been honored. All right, so we've been studying about precious stones. We've been studying about gold, putting in, put in the temple, in the tabar, tabernacle. Bakit yun yung nilalagay sa mga gamit within the tabernacle? Bakit yun yung nasa breastplate ng high priest? Why? Because they're precious. And remember, the breastplate, that, the breastplate of judgment na nandun sa breastplate ng high priest, that's the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's close. The reason why it's here, it's close to the high priest's heart. And listen very carefully because who is our high priest now? It's Yahusha Hamashiach. And umiiyak po. Nagdurugo ang puso ng Panginoon 
sa mga pinagagawa ng anak niya ever since pinag-aralan natin sa Esdras, pinag-aralan natin sa Maccabees, binasa natin kanina ngayon, uh, kanina sa Ezekiel. And those people who are not following his Torah, masakit sa Panginoon yun. But he has that covenant with us. Ang gusto niya sa atin ay sumunod sa salita niya. And we can only be precious in the sight of Yahuwah if we continue follow if we start following his Torah and continue in it. Katulad nga ng sinabi ni Job, sabi niya, uh, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Alam niyo po yung ginto nila dumadaan po yun sa apoy para maalis lahat ng impurities. Kahit pag nagpalinis po kayo ng ginto, iniinitan nila yan para yung mga dumi masunog. And ganun din po tayo. Kaya, kaya kadalasan, nasasaktan tayo, pinapag tinatamaan tayo kasi maraming kailangan ayusin sa atin. And sana, sa pagkatapos ng, ng refining natin, ay may matira pa na ginto. Mahirap yan kung nawala, walang natira and eventually babalik lang tayo sa mundo. All right? Now, this is a very clear uh, illustration here na pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon kung paano niya pipiliin yung mga santo niya, di ba? Yun, yun naman talaga eh, yung santo niya. Eh, marami kasi uh, ang nasa isip yung santo eh mga Diyos-Diyosan. Yeah, but let me just finish. Alam ko, sorry for skipping verses, but let me just read this in verse uh, 37. I'll start with verse 35. And recompense shall follow and the reward shall be manifested. Righteous deeds shall awake and unrighteous deeds shall not sleep. Then the pit of torment shall appear and opposite it shall be the place of rest and the furnace of hell shall be disclosed and opposite it the paradise of delight. There's a paradise and there's the furnace of Sheol. Verse 37, Then the Most High will say to the nations that have been raised from the dead, Look now and understand whom you have denied, whom you have not served, whose commandments you have despised. Look on this side and on that. Here are delight and rest, and there are fire and torments. Thus he will speak to them on the day of judgment. So, and you read this, this is actually the same as Revelation. A day that has no sun or moon or stars or cloud or, or thunder or lightning or wind or water or air or darkness or evening or morning or summer or spring or heat or winter or frost or cold or hail or rain or dew or noon or night or dawn or shining or brightness or light, but only the splendor of the glory of the Most High by which all shall see what has been determined for them. Now, very prophetic books. Pero it gives you a glimpse. Yung mga binasa po natin, ang, ang importante malaman natin, Yahuwah has always asked His people to follow His Torah, His commandments. At in, wala pong nagbago sa panahon natin. So I hope that uh, as we close tonight, ay maunawaan natin kung bakit tayo sumusunod sa Torah. It's not because we are part of old paths. It's not because I'm part of a religion. But it's more of, ang ginagawa po natin is more of understanding who Yahuwah is and understanding bakit, bakit uh, alin, ang, ano ang dapat kong sundin at ano ang dapat kong gawin para maging ginto ako sa harapan na Panginoon. Alright? Makitin po ang daan, mga kapatid. Yahusha himself said, There are few that find it. And I hope we are that few people. All right? So any more thoughts? Any more uh, thing you would like to add, mga kapatid, before we close? Thank you, Brother Gary. Napaka-importante po na malaman natin, especially we're studying Shemot, Very important to understand our body is the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, which is in us, which is which are not our own. Therefore, glorify Yahuwah in our body and in our spirit, which are Yahuwah's. All right? Sa Panginoon po ito.
kung sinuko mo ang buhay mo, yung totoong pagsuko ay yung totoong pagsunod sa Panginoon. Hindi yung sa bibig lang, naniniwala ako kay Jesus Christ, binuran lang niya lahat ng batas, kalukuhan po yun. And I can directly say, firmly say, kalukuhan po yun. Let's, if we truly believe in the Messiah of Yahuwah, Yahusha Mashiach, then we follow the Torah, the commandments that Yahuwah has laid for us from Moshe. Okay? Yung galing kay Moses, yung pa din ang matutupad. Alam nyo, mahirap. Ma, uh, sa totoo lang, mas madali pa nga dito sa Middle East. Bakit? Bawal ang baboy. Di ba? Bawal ang baboy dito. Pero dito nga, pag nag-lunch ako, kasama ko yung mga kasama ko sa opisina ng Pilipino. Sa kaliwa ko, may pork chop. Sa kanan ko, may binagoongan. O, di ba? <laughs> Left and right. Pre, kain ka! Madali pang tumanggi dito. Kasi lalo na may COVID ngayon, madali tumanggi. Ang problema, pag umuwi po tayo ng Pilipinas, dyan papasok ang pagsubok. Bakit? Pagdating mo pa lang, baka magpaletsyo na yung magulang nyo. Di ba? Magpaletsyo nyo yung mga <laughs> barkada nyo. O. Tapos, siyempre, yung mga baptist natin, mga kapatiran, mga uh, kapatid, kamag-anak, aanyayahan tayo manambaan ng linggo. So there are a lot of things that uh, we should be already training ourselves. Para pag umuwi tayo, we do not compromise. Okay? So ituro po natin sa mga mahal natin sa buhay yan na hindi po nagbago ang batas ng Panginoon. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? And the book of Ezekiel, katulad ng binasa natin kanina, I, that's actually the revelation of, uh, of the Old Testament. Kung babasahin nyo, nandiyan din yung resurrection in chapter 37, the war of Gog and Magog in chapter, uh, the fo- following chapters, 39. From chapter 40 onwards, that's talking about the millennial reign and all the visions of Ezekiel that he saw ay yung sabats, gagawin pa din natin later on. So bakit natin tinigil? Eh kasi naloko tayo ng mga Griego, naloko tayo ng mga Romano, naloko tayo ng mga Protestant, and uh, naloko tayo talaga. Kaya tanggapin nyo na lang na naloko tayo and we just start from scratch and just keep on learning. Alright? So any questions, please feel free to put in the comments or message us. Uh, hindi namin ma-assure sa inyo na masasagot but uh, we'll, we'll do our best to help each and every one. Our aim is for us to learn the word of Yahuwah. Alright? So maraming salamat mga kapatid and uh, tayo po ay manalangin. Let's pray. Our Father Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Elohim, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, our Elohim, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Master, the Holy One of Yashared. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes to the truth. Thank you, for Father, for making us understand that the religion that we were in was wrong. Salamat, Panginoon. Dahil marami kang pinapakita sa amin. Thank you, Father, for opening us books to test. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to read these books. And uh, hindi masara ang isip namin, Panginoon, sa mga tinuro sa amin ng tao. Magkosalamat, Panginoon, na pinaalam mo sa amin ang history in the, Ma- the book of Maccabees. And uh, I pray, dear Father, sa patuloy namin pagsasaliksik ng iyong salita, patuloy namin pagsasaliksik, Panginoon, ng takot namin sa iyo. Dalain ko, Panginoon, na patuloy mo po kaming turuan. And as we continue to strive to know you more and more, I pray, dear Father, please, we humbly come before you. We humbly ask for your grace upon us. And we just pray, dear Father, please, continue to teach us your word. As you have said, Open now my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy Torah. Thank you, Father, for uh, Brother Gary, who, uh, whom you have used today para may share sa about Ezekiel and about Maccabees. 
And uh, thank you, Father, for the simplicity of your word. Just telling us how your people in the Old Testament have forgotten about your Torah, how, how, how they have forgotten about the Sabbaths, how they have forgotten about your feast days, and how they have defiled the temple. And we just pray, dear Father, alam ko na na defiled na namin ang temple namin for so many years. But because of your grace, because of Messiah, who have died on the cross, we believe, Father, that you can forgive sins and give us a new life and give us a new start. And we just thank you, Father, for all of these things that you have opened to us. And I pray, dear Father, in the process of allowing us to cleanse our temple, our, our own temples, I pray, dear Father, na patuloy mo po kaming turuan, ipaliwanag mo po sa amin ang Torah mo, because there are a lot of uh, questions that may arise as we study this, and we just pray, please help us to understand all of these. And uh, while we are waiting and while we are in our own wilderness, I pray, dear Father, that you will find us faithful and you will find us, Father, seeking you. And uh, like the wise virgins who kept their lamps filled with oil, burning, as you have said, let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify you, which art in heaven. And we just pray, dear Father, help us to keep our lights burning. We may be few, but I continue to ask, Father, keep us burning. And I pray, dear Father, for all our relatives, for all our loved ones, for all our friends whom we have served with before. Father, please have mercy upon them and please remove the veil in their hearts and open their eyes. To the pastors that we have worked with, I pray, dear Father, katokin mo po ang puso nila. At dalain ko, Panginoon, na ikaw po ang bukas ng ilaw na binukas mo para sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. All I can say is hallelujah, praise you, and we glorify you. And thank you, Father, for this light that you have shown us. I pray, dear Father, sa mga nalalabuan ko pa rin, mga kapatiran, Panginoon, anggalin mo po ang veil and help us have that conviction to read your word every day. Thank you so much. Thank you for the access to these books. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you give us in testing these books and continue to help us, Father, as we read your scriptures. We bless you, we glorify you, we praise you, and we thank you, Father, for your word. We magnify your Torah and all of these things we ask and pray in your most holy Shem, Yahuwah in your son's name, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen and Amen. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. La, na-rapture na yung isang kasama natin. <laughs> uh, praise Yahuwah. Napakalinaw po ng salita ng Panginoon. Napakasarap basahin po ng mga libong ito. And it just supports how we should really go back to the Torah. Alright mga kapatid, thank you so much for your time. And I hope you learned something today as we have opened a couple of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say apocryphal books anymore, but uh, rather than saying that uh, the hidden books, the hidden manna that was kept from us, I unti-unti nang nabubuksan. And I encourage you to read these books. Pero yun nga, read your 66 books first, master it because it will add to the knowledge. Mas maiintindihan niyo po pag binasa niyo po itong mga libong to. Alright? So, it's, it, it, will, it will not change what you believe in the 66 books, but, uh, I mean, it will not change the 66 books, but it will add more insight and knowledge and it will connect a lot of things. Alright? So, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat and good night everyone. I'll see you on our Friday uh, scripture study. And uh, <laughs> shalom. <laughs> bye bye. Shalom. Salamat po. Meron po ba kayong tanong? May tanong ba kayo dyan, uh, Brother Manny? Tsaka si Otoy ba to? Apa, si Brother Manny. Hi, Otoy. Si Brother FB po. Nagahang na. Nagahang na. <laughs> amen, amen. All right, to our Facebook. Uh, okay, uh, naman po. Attendance. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
right. All right. All right. See you, Bob. Bye bye, Facebook. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Bob.